Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the founders of Le Web, Loïc and Géraldine Lemur. Morning. Hello, everyone. It's great to be back in London. Yes. Uh, for the 10th year of Le Web, second time in London. You can see yourself actually playing with my glass here. If I don't move too much, it's not, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, so this is what I see, you can see what I see. Um, it's good to be here. It's very nice to be here, How to are be you back. Today? I'm good. Good, and we like that venue. We like, uh, we like to see you all here. How many people do we have here, Charlene? Um, we have uh, 1,200 people. 50 uh, countries. 50 countries, yeah. Yes, and so the first, uh, we did the first Low Web London last year. Um, and so this is the second one, and the first one is always new, and so you guys came, but we didn't know if you would come back, right? So I guess it's when you do it the second time that, uh, that, that, that you know it's, uh, it's, it's happening. So we're really glad to see you here again. And uh, we will see uh, a short video now from uh, Boris Johnson, the Mayor of London. Hi folks, Boris Johnson here, Mayor of London. Very sorry I can't be with you today for the Le Web conference, but I want to reassure you that you have chosen the right city to come to for uh, this discussion, because London in the last four or five years, almost without any intervention from politicians like me, though of course I try to claim credit for it, has become the tech capital of Europe, if not the world. We've got about 24,000 firms of one kind or another in that sector, perhaps 40,000 people employed in that business. It's growing the whole time. It's an incredibly exciting sector of our economy, fintech, green tech, nanotech, biotech, plain old tech. It's all bursting and pullulating in that uh, Shoreditch east uh, part of town uh, and spreading throughout the city. It's a very, very exciting time to be uh, watching what's happening. It must be even more exciting to be taking part in the tech explosion in London. I hope you enjoy your conference today. Uh, please get in touch with us, with my office in City Hall, if you want any backup or any background to what we can do uh, to support you. In the meantime, have a very, very enjoyable Le Web conference. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, obviously, I have his cell phone in case anyone wants some help. Uh, from, from the city of London, absolutely no problem. Uh, we are so delighted to, to be back. So we have about uh, 100 journalists as well coming, yeah. a lot of news on stage. Uh, we have uh, some partners you want to talk about? Yeah, I want, I want to, uh, to uh, thank uh, our partners, uh, main sponsors, um, uh, Google, Datasift, HP, uh, for helping us being here too. And can you talk about the setup this year? So they said, uh, last year we had a survey and, and you really wanted to network and, but, but have special spaces for that. So we created a new thing, um, the, the attendee meeting room. It's a little bit more um, um, uh, formal than, than a networking room. So you can uh, see that downstairs. Obviously there is a second stage downstairs with the startup competition running all day long today and a program tomorrow. We have our expo and the partners. We had, um 350 startups were candidates. 350 startups and, um, and uh, the same format, 16 companies selected. So good luck to them. They'll start this morning. Can you talk about Paris? Because it's our 10th anniversary in Paris. Yes, it's our 10th anniversary. So we're going we're gonna to be back, uh, back in December for Paris. We kind of uh, try to make it special, right? So. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy actually to, for the, I, I never do that generally, but uh, announce the theme for Paris now. And since it's our 10 years anniversary, we will make it the next 10 years. That's going to be a very broad theme where we will 
review what happened the last 10 years and see what's going to happen in the next 10 years. That's going to be the theme. And we have four speakers we can already announce for Paris. That's yeah, a so tease. You want to talk absolutely. about the um, most famous one already? Well, I'm, 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 I'm delighted to say that Marisa Maya is coming back. Um, so, uh, uh, Guy Kawasaki. Uh, Marisa came for seven years. Marisa came for seven Got years. Got engaged. Just last year, she didn't. Well, uh, she had a baby. Exactly. So, so coming back, uh, Guy Kawasaki. Uh, we have a uh, famous uh, chef, um, Ferran Adria. From uh, El Bulli. From uh, El Bulli. Uh, He's so going to speak in Catalan. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> <It's gonna> <laughs> and, and, and our. Um, I mean, famous Gary Van Schuck. Uh, Gary V is coming back as well. Those are the four. We, we haven't even started working on the program yet. So just a little tease yeah, exactly. around. Um, it's in six months, right? So. Exactly. Anything else uh, you would like to add around well, the setup and the venue? No, the setup, I, I mean, uh, well, like I, I always say, take, take the place, uh, make it yours, go everywhere and, uh, and enjoy, have fun, uh, meet people. Um, and we have two days, so. Let's make the show happen. And we will have fun. I, will, I want to congratulate you and, and the entire team for making it possible this year again in London. Yeah, thank you, the team, already. <laughs> Great. Well, so uh, before, before uh, I move to a presentation, I have actually uh, an announcement from our friends uh, with, uh, with a red campaign. It's the 32nd anniversary of the discovery of AIDS, and I wanted to uh, acknowledge it on stage and also um, um, ask for your help. We, uh, they are asking you to create a Vine video, if you want to, with anything red in it. It could be your nails, it could be anything, um, and Vine it. Or you just can tweet, choose red, save lives, uh, and a hashtag is red world record. They want as many tweets as possible to support red. I will tweet it in a second as well. Uh, so we'll do that for, for them, and uh, it's great that they do this as well. Great. Well, I guess you're busy, Jarlene, and uh, for once... You're, I... you're too. <laughs> well, not so much. I have my, I have my uh, mail coming. This is a little disrupting. Thank you so much, Jarlene. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see you in a bit. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can, um, you, if, you, if you tweet at Loic, it's going to actually show up here. So I'm hoping it doesn't show up on the screen too much because my mail is coming too. So it's the first time I do this, it's pretty interesting. Um, I, have a, I have a few slides which I've published on the theme. I, first time I do that. I only have 180 slides for like 10 minutes, so I'm going to see how I, I will do that. But uh, that presentation uh, is on SlideShare already, just Google for the sharing economy, SlideShare or Loic, whatever, you'll find it. Um, it got 80,000 views, which, uh, or a little bit more than that, which shows you the uh, interest on the topic. So I'm really delighted you're here around this theme and all our amazing speakers. So I'm just going to go through it really fast because it's more an introduction here about what we're going to see for the for the next uh, two days. Um, so first, I'm not an expert. Uh, we have the experts in the room, Lisa at least, who is here, uh, Gansky, and uh, we have uh, Axel Tessandier, who is just sitting here. It's going to speak tomorrow about the digital hippies. Um, and uh, and, and they, I really recommend you to read those two books. They uh, inspired me a lot, of course, for this theme. Um, and uh, if you look at it, you cannot avoid it. If you want to avoid the sharing economy, it's impossible. Uh, you can see uh, Brian here of Airbnb on the cover of Forbes and cover of The Economist, so it matters. Uh, the question we will discuss is, does it matter enough to become an industry, or is it two or three players, which are really big? You cannot avoid it. If you look at uh, Airbnb, it's 40,000 people per day, and I, I kept updating those slides, by the way, so we'll get an update from Joe in a, in a second. But you can see the growth here on the animation of Airbnb taking over the world. Um, and the growth, look at that. That doesn't happen that often. Um, we have uh, also Lending Club here with us, which is the peer-to-peer -peer lending. They lend more than 1.5 billion. So it's also sharing economy uh, applied to finance. So instead of borrowing 10,000 pounds to your bank, you go and you borrow it to people who invest and they get a return. So it's peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, lending. And you can see the growth as well, which is incredible. Kickstarter, as uh, I updated that this morning, $320 million uh, went through uh, projects. 2.2 uh, million people funded them, which is a real you know, crowdsourcing. And it's, uh, it's amazing, because for entrepreneurs, you can raise funding without getting diluted, without talking to VCs, finally. 
we don't have to talk to VCs. Hi, VCs in the room. Uh, no, of course, we love the VCs. They generally come a little later. But uh, some projects such as uh, uh, yeah, 535 million in crowdsourcing in 100,000 projects. That was like a, just a few weeks ago. Um, one of those projects will be on stage this morning. It's the 3D free doodler. You know, it's a pen where you write uh, you, you write. You, you create an object in 3D using a pen. They raised $2.3 million on Kickstarter. They are here this morning to share with us. Um, and uh, we, we thought it was very exciting. I don't think they've done a demo like this ever. So they came to London all the way uh, to do it with us. Uh, here, I like Amanda Palmer's example where 25,000 fans donated $1.2 million on, uh, on Kickstarter to finance her new album, which she could not have financed otherwise using uh, the traditional music uh, industry uh, sector. Zip cars on stage as well, uh, which is uh, cooler than owning a car. You have uh, Lyft that uh, also updated that, raised $60 million two weeks ago. $60 million for, as you know, you can uh, uh, just uh, uh, become a cab driver, if you like. And, but you're cooler because uh, you don't sit in the back, you sit uh, next to, uh, to the driver. And, um, and uh, this is going to be very interesting in Paris. I expect uh, them to try to kill the drivers because, of course, this is going after the monopoly of uh, the taxis. And uh, I think London is the same, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you also have a monopoly here. Um, but um, so very interesting how legal, and we will cover that as well. Martin Varsavsky will talk about it. Uh, and policy and governments have to adapt because the citizens want more taxis and want to be able to share rides. They want to do that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's going really fast. Uber is doing that as well. Um, and there are many companies. 52% of the Americans have rented, borrowed, or leased items. 83% said they would share those items if they could do it easily. Uh, and uh, it's a change in, in, in culture, where, where we're in a culture where we have a cultural shift between more and more into less and better quality of life. Uh, so why sharing? The first reason why people share in the sharing economy grows that much is because there is a recession. Um, there is, so people have less money, so it's, of course, cheaper to share your car or to use someone else's car or to go in Airbnb. It's easier to, um, uh, to, um, to go on Airbnb, find a place. Very, people are fed up with waste. Uh, people have too much stuff that they don't use. The uh, self-storage industry is a $22 billion industry, uh, which is larger than Hollywood box office sales. So you can see the growth. And at the same time, so we store more and more outside of our homes, but it's not like our homes went smaller. They went actually bigger between 1950 and today. The uh, home size basically has uh, doubled um, in, in, in size or more, more than doubled. So we are more stuff. We don't know what to do with it. There is too much choice uh, in this consumer world we are in. And that choice doesn't connect with happiness. So you, you probably know this, uh, this graph. Again, this is all online if you want to uh, find it. But you can see the increase of uh, GDP per head from between 1946 and uh, 2000, basically. So the GDP increases, the happiness decreases. So it's not that we have more that makes us more happy, as we all know. There's always something better, bigger, and faster. The more we have, the more we want. Uh, we also have uh, enough of crappy products. Could not find better than that to illustrate crappy products. <laughs> but uh, another bad news, and I'm like, this is getting gloomy. I'm sorry, we're going to go out of that. But we live in isolation. The number of people living and dining by themselves has doubled over the last 40 years. So uh, this is not great. Of course, another factor is the social, local, and mobile revolution, where technology is enabling this new kind of growth with uh, sharing and booking a car with your mobile and your smartphone. You can see it coming. You know the experience, less friction. Uh, the sharing is the basis of technology with uh, uh, you know, Wikipedia and Mozilla. And that all started very long time ago, but now it's getting everywhere. We will hear from Etsy today, uh, so I'm going to go through it really fast. Also from BlaBlaCar, 3 million drivers in Europe launching hitchhiking, uh, using hitchhiking again, and that's, uh, that didn't exist before anymore. Cooking, Cedric is uh, offering you to share when you cook something. You can invite people to, uh, to have dinner with you. It's pretty much like Airbnb for, uh, for cooking. Uh, Lea from TaskRabbit is going to give us an update. 
And uh, a great panel that I'm really for looking forward to myself, which is Bitcoin, um, because it's, uh, it's hot, as we know. But uh, we also, so, so we have uh, one of uh, a few key players, and one of them has raised $2 million, which is also new. So players of Bitcoin are getting uh, funded. So they basically want to get rid of our uh, current currencies. So that's pretty interesting. So there's a new c consumer mindset, which is uh, uh, simplicity, traceability, transparency, community, very interesting, very important, participation and collaboration. And if you don't have those, it's kind of wrong uh, these days. So there is an entire new generation, which we will talk about for two days, which is growing up with new values. They believe in authenticity, in sustainability, in doing well is doing good, and uh, community sharing creating together crowdfunding, and I believe greed is bad, but money is okay. And uh, Axel is going to give you a full presentation tomorrow morning as an opening talk on the digital hippies. We have the, uh, uh, the uh, players be behind Summit. They uh, acquired a mountain for $40 million in Utah, and that's a panel tomorrow, uh, this afternoon. And I uh, can't wait to hear about uh, what they're, they're up to creating a new community of entrepreneurs and artists in a mountain. Why not? Burning Man, we have a founder of Burning Man, uh, Larry, who is, uh, that, 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 uh, that, that is he's pretty special. He doesn't talk much, but he came all the way to London to uh, talk to you about 50,000 people who come to the desert every year, uh, end of August. And it's a gift economy. It's not even sharing economy. They uh, want to live with less. Much less, great story, you find it online as well, my slides if you want, from Graham Hill uh, in the New York Times, where he was saying this stuff ended up running my life, the things I consumed ended up consuming me. So you are not the clothes you wear, the content of your wallet, of a car you drive. I really like that quote from Rachel, advertising as us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate, so we can buy shit we don't need. <laughs> and that's why the sharing economy is growing because we don't need that. Uh, new products are being created, um, and those products are designed to last. They're not crappy. You know about those printers, I guess, without you know, quoting any, any brands that, uh, that are designed to be used only a number of times, for example, and then you have to trash them. So that we don't want anymore. They preserve the planet. They focus on use, use availability of use more than ownership. Huge trend on the sharing economy that will keep talking about as well. So a few examples, Netflix, obviously, you can, that was the first step. You can, instead of having a DVD, <laughs> I can't even think about that anymore, but you obviously, you don't need to own it. You just, you know, have a Netflix subscription. Same for music. You don't need to own a CD. You don't even need to buy on iTunes. Here, you just pay a Spotify subscription and you get all the music you want. Again, uh, access, use, not ownership. You don't need ownership anymore. And I know Jeremiah Young will come back to that as a huge trend affecting business as well, because if you don't need ownership, that means you're going to buy less cars, for example. Uh, Rachel has four principles of uh, collaborative consumption here. Critical mass, ideal capacity, so your car is staying there all day, maybe here today. Uh, someone else could use it. Belief in the commons, talked about those values. And trust, trust, very important. Social networking has made everything possible with, of course, Facebook and blah, blah, car. We'll have a presentation about this in a, in a few days where uh, hitchhiking di died because you don't want someone you don't trust in your car. But suddenly, if I tell you it's a friend of yours, so it's a friend of mine, probably you'll trust him and you'll get him in your car or her and, uh, and vice versa. Uh, trust between strangers. I added a fifth one, which is a, a high price tag because like a power drill is a good example of, uh, of, of uh, what things we could share, but it doesn't really happen just because it's not expensive enough for you to go and borrow it. New brands, uh, well, no brand is the new brand. I like this one, even though I don't totally agree with that. But look at Craigslist, right? Craigslist is uh, a very minimalist design. I'm hoping to talk about that with Joe today. But you don't need to, to have an amazing million pounds uh, website in design to make a success. There is no push or intrusive advertising, uh, less and less. Again, those 50,000 people going in the desert don't have any advertising, no money, no branding, no um, 
uh, time, no Wi-Fi, no nothing. Uh, very community focused. And uh, we will have a presentation from the CEO of Couchsurfing. Couchsurfing also, you could, you could think, so the principle is you go, that's pretty, uh, pretty old, I mean, old in a good way, but like it's not new. Uh, it's a huge phenomenon. And people would think it's because we don't have enough money, we would crash on someone's couch. Actually, it's more like because it's cooler to go in London and meet Londoners and sleep with uh, Londoners rather than a hotel. So this is growing very fast. I put my name in it just to see it's pretty interesting. You get a mail. Here are the guys who would like to stay with you in San Francisco. Uh, it stays out of the way of uh, users. Uh, it's got purpose. Um, Tom, is, Tom is a good example of that. With, you, know, you buy one pair of shoes, they uh, ship one to children as well. Um, and I know Axel will also come back to that tomorrow. We will also look at the negative aspects and whether it's uh, a real huge trend or a fad. And if you, if you pause on this for a second, you could say, you could totally argue, as I researched it myself, argued that the three main like, sectors where it's happening is lodging, with Airbnb being huge, uh, of course, craftsmanship with Etsy, and of course, all the car players. Those three are big, but all the rest is hundreds of startups. Um, and they're not big yet. So would it be just a fad? It's only two or three players. We'll talk about that. Milo has a presentation saying it's all, it's all a fad. So we will see that. And there are some companies which died, like uh, Whipcar, which uh, shut down, um, or Loose Cubes, which raised eight or nine million dollars, eight million dollars, um, and shut it down because it was more of a marketplace model than, uh, than a community uh, model. There was no uh, community. Trust is the key. Uh, here is a quote from Craig, the founder of Craigslist, that I really like. By the end of this decade, power and influence will shift largely to those people with the best reputation and trust networks from people with money and nominal power. The power shift from money to uh, trust networks. So here's a, a joke we found online with, uh, with, uh, with Axel, uh, which is your reputation statement. Instead of your bank account statement, you get your uh, reputation statement. So, but it's, I mean, coming back to this, you could say, I used Airbnb, I returned the flat in perfect condition, I get a few points. And then I used your car, and uh, you can also trust me next time. And my trust level increases as a currency. So you could, you could totally think that um, in, you, you have a, a, your credit rating in the US, for example, which lets you borrow money or not. You could have your uh, trust rating on the sharing economy that lets you use all those products or not. Um, large companies already crowdsource. I have to be honest with you, there are not that many. But I found one which I like, Walmart. Uh, if you go to, at least they were really good at doing PR around this. If you go to Walmart store and uh, you live next to a, a delivery that is scheduled, so if you, have, um, you, you buy something and they have your address, they tell you, here's another customer, you could, could you deliver the product to him, it's a block away from you. If you do that, you get discounts or you get advantages. Pretty smart to use the sharing economy as a, as a delivery. Um, you can participate in that, uh, and I think that's the key. We'll talk about this with Larry at Burning Man, where he says no one is a tourist. No one is passive. Everybody should contribute and participate. Uh, the growth of the sharing economy can be slowed down by large companies, governments, which won't have the same interest. We talked about the taxis. We will talk later about Airbnb being illegal in some cases, because if you rent a flat, you can, cannot sub-rent it in some cases. They still do it. Um, you can, we can think about replacing consumerism with peer-to-peer uh, -peer sharing, and Douglas will make a presentation about this with the launch of, I can't say it, the launch of a movement, but I didn't say it. Um, and that uh, movement aims at, um, hi Douglas, <laughs> that movement <laughs> aims at uh, moving from a centralized production, wealth and control, industrial economy into a uh, peer sharing uh, economy. But I won't say more about that. But we need to legalize sharing. We need to make it legal. We need to make it bigger uh, so that all those services and startup um, uh, can grow. 
Um, I, I think it's all about sharing the culture and these values. I believe myself that it's a huge movement just starting. That's why we chose it as a center theme for the Web London. That's why Jeremiah uh, Oyang, who we'll talk today, has, has dedicated the weeks of research uh, on a report they will present. And I am delighted to introduce those uh, two days to you, uh, with you uh, today and that we have all those amazing speakers who uh, came and, uh, and joined us. I hope you find it interesting as I find it interesting to prepare it. Thank you very much.